good morning, afternoon, evening, late of night, or if you live in one of those places that has no time zone, we have a especial guest. We have Jerry Hall. And uh, Jerry and I started Crypto and Coffee together way back at Yonda when we, well, I got booted. He didn't get booted. He, he escaped another platform we were contributing to. Let's just leave it at that. No bad blood. And, uh, and so we started Crypto and Coffee, and we had a lot of fun. And Jerry does a bunch of really cool interviews. And additionally, he has an evening show that he does on Friday evenings, I think almost every Friday evening, right, Jerry? Every so, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. 9 p.m. Eastern. It's a really cool show. He has a lot of cool guests. And I always get on there and usually attack from the comment section. Uh, and Brady's on there as well. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I think Bit Avenue comes on too. Um, so yeah, so it's cool. So we're going to talk to Jerry about rebalancing portfolios because Jerry used to be poor. Guess what? Jerry, no more poor. <laughs> and it, it shows that uh, this space can flip the script on your balance sheet real quick. If you have good programming, if you have good basic theories and because Jerry's on the show, I promise you, I'm going to do everything in my power to not use profanity today. Any profanity, because Jerry don't like profanity. He lives near a church. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me say hello. Uh, hello. Hello. I'm sure in some language that's hello. So hello to Hedino, to How TV, to Chris Too Far. I get it. I get what you did there. Uh, Rodrigo. Kyondo Rodrigo, Scorpion, M. Sivan C, Get Involved, Troublemaking, Troublemaker, J, Stress Relief, Indian Gamer, Veritax, SJO, Theta TV, McNabb, AJD. I keep thinking that AJD means something. I wish I knew. Uh, Grode, uh, Bear Tall, Joe Pirate, Baykeeper, Sniper Princess, do not get her mad. Uh, let's see, Cece Brown and Gatome. <clears throat> Good to see you all. Uh, Scorp also over on the YouTube. P. Kelly, Dubai money. I like saying Dubai, man. I'm going to Dubai, so I like saying Dubai. Uh, Lawrence, what's going on? <clears throat> Scott Hill, Leon, Brady. What's up, Brady? Uh, uh, Wotek, Wotek. I'm getting that wrong. I always get it wrong. Um, uh, the prophet, that's right. The prophet. Oh, I know the prophet song. We love it. Uh, let's see, Demayan, Elipal, Bitcoin Candy. What's up, Brandon? Uh, let's see, ba, ba, ba. Michael Murphy, Cross the Pond, Hoop and Tony, Tom, Gordon, Emmanuel, of course, JJ, Denise. What's going on, Denise? And Nico, Frank, uh, let's see, 29LH06. I know that means something, but I don't know what it means. JR80, Kyle Adams, Voitech. God darn it. It's a void. I know. You know what's crazy? We over the weekend, I was at the beach at a birthday party. And you know who I was there with? Voitech. A guy named Voitech. And I was teaching him about crypto. And there's only so much you can do while you're eating cake to teach someone about crypto and not look like a meme. So I just said, Bitcoin's good. Cake is good. And I think he got it. I really felt like we bonded over that cake. No, no, I, I didn't say that. Did I say did I say the GD word? I don't think I said it. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's pretend nothing happened. Dab life, what's going on? Um, ba -da -ba -da -da. Okay, let me say hello to Dwight, Antonio, of course, David, Ryan, Shade, Justin, JD, Denise, Cassandra, Haresh, Cutter, Dion, Hog, Claire, Michael, Akram, Alex, Jesse, uh, and those that passed. Because, you know. Somebody's got to have died, right? I count on that. That's those those are the, the wounds that sustain me. Uh Jerry, when we get back, what are we talking about today? Well, you know what? <laughs> that folks, this all started with a message to Nick this morning. Hey Nick, I want to do a portfolio review because a lot has changed for me over the last month and a half or so. And he said, sure, but it would need to be da 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 da. I said, well, let's do it in the morning. What about doing a show? And he goes, okay, that's a good idea. Let's do a show on it. Because it's through, it's this, like we're all evolving, right? 
all of us evolving. None of us are going to be in two years where we are right now. We're all adding to our thinking. And part of that is sharing these thoughts and processes with each other and with the greater, larger community. And so I just, you know, we're going to get to explain kind of how I got from one place to the next place. Buying a dollar for a nickel. That's what we do. All right. <clears throat> we will be right back after these non-commercial messages. You know, one day we're going to be fancy as hell. People are going to be giving us money for commercial breaks and everything. But until then, zilch. Okay, we're back, and we're going to do a quick run through prices. Let's see, giving a little bit of feedback there. All right, uh, Bitcoin fifty eight eight, <clears throat> kind of interesting. It's starting to climb back up, approaching sixty again, and it's a much slower, much more consistent climb. Uh, Jerry, any thoughts about uh, the Bitcoin climbing back up? Well, at some point, with a fixed supply asset. If the demand continues to outstrip the supply, the available float, et cetera, you can assume price appreciation. Yep. I think that's what we're seeing. It's a slow melt upward. Um, I would be a put seller. I would not be selling calls at all. You're, you're, you're very liable to get left behind. If you are going to sell calls, you should be selling out at around 200K. Because my gut says we see 200K this year. That's what my gut says. But then again, my gut also had enchiladas and can't be trusted. All right. Uh, Ethereum, over 1,800 again. Just two weeks ago, it was in the 1,500s. Actually, I think it even touched in the 1,400s for a bit. Uh, you know, Ethereum has 99 problems, but apparently the price is not one of them. Unless you're trying to move it around, in which case the price is 99 of those problems because the fee structure makes it impossible. Jerry, what did it cost you to stake audio yesterday? You know, well, I didn't. <laughs> it, 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 I didn't have enough Ethereum in my MetaMask wallet, and so it said uh, you needed three hundred and fifty-seven dollars worth of Ethereum just to Ugh. stake, just to stake your five hundred tokens or five hundred eighty tokens. Like, nah, no, yeah, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. So I, I loaded some more Ethereum on the wallet, but I'm gonna wait till like Sunday at three a.m. in the morning and hope that. I, don't know. I made a discovery. On gate, I'm going to give everyone this discovery, and I'm not telling anyone to do this. I'm just going to throw this out there. Sometimes if you're looking to stake tokens and you're looking to maybe get a little yield, a little short-term play, uh, on gate, I'd say 30 40% of the assets, they have these 10-day lending vehicles, which go from 3% annualized and I'm not shitting you here. This is a real number to 153%. And a couple of the ones that are over 100% are on this list. Yes, you heard it here first. I'm not going to tell you which ones because I'm in one of them that's getting 153%. And I would rather you guys don't join me on it. It's far too risky for you. I would just say stay away. Okay, um, let's carry on. Uh, Cardano, a buck 22. Cool. It's up. It's flat. It's flat. It's up. It's down. It's sideways. It's been having a pretty good year, though. Um, what happens next? It looks like they're very close to announcing the Ethiopia deal. And uh, so we will see. Uh, let me say hi to Patrick, Biotech Breakout, Sylvia, Expat, Matt, Plu. Al, what's going on, Al? No, you're never late, buddy. Uh, and I thought I saw Leon. Oh, there's Leon. Okay, good. All right. Can't continue without Leon. Um, Polkadot, 3437. It is uh, up on the month, but it's been pretty flat. Jerry, your thoughts. Do you think Polkadot has made the argument to the rest of the world what the F it actually is? No. 
I think what Polkadot has done effectively is been able to distinguish itself from Ethereum in that a tremendous amount of activity will happen on parachains off the main net that will reconcile with main net on intervals, therefore creating a trans, you know, a, a dynamic in which transactions can occur with low cost and obviously main net um, settlement in intervals. And there's a lot of people that have bought into that. But it's but kind I think of that's all they've been able to actually demonstrate to this where we are right now. It's very it's a promise. It's a narrative, not a product. It feels like wolf tickets. Yeah. I went on a wolf ticket rant yesterday. That's what the rant was. I was trying to remember what it was. It was a wolf ticket rant. I ranted because it it seems like there's a lot of these really high market cap protocol layer solutions that aren't yet solutions. Like you can't really launch anything on Polkadot yet. You can't really launch anything on Cardano yet. You know, they're they're getting closer. Cosmos getting closer. Algorand closer. Near, you can. You can actually build on near this second. This second. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That same main net that's going to launch this summer was supposed to launch in the end of January. So um, I will not be holding breaths waiting for that. It's a little bit frustrating. Okay. Uh, Theta, 12 spot 93. Uh, it's up on the week, month, year. It's down on the day, but so what? It's still around 13. You know, it's got a, it's got a fixed supply, a billion tokens, and no real obvious competitor as far as I've seen. <clears throat> Nothing of quality. So I'm not so sure this thing can't keep going. There's no reason that this can't be a $50 billion market cap asset, meaning a $50 token. Uh, thoughts on Theta, Jerry? You know, it's I, I think it's a very interesting product, and I do believe it has competition. It's called YouTube. It's called Twitch. And um, those are centralized entities run by corporations and Theta is a decentralized network. And at some point, their roadmap talks about uh, a governance model being um, administered or administrated, sorry, by a community, as opposed to a, a board of directors in an executive team that is profit driven. I think it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. I love the concept. It's got a huge future and a huge adjustable market. The question is, will it, right? Did will it go from a cute little hobby to an actual competitor to face uh, YouTube? Are you broadcasting also out to Theta? No, I am not. I am I'm, I'm kind of tech-tarded in, in a lot of ways. <clears throat> and if it wasn't for Brady pushing buttons and doing things, I would probably be only broadcasting to myself. Well, Friday. maybe Brady ought to get off of his lazy A- dollar sign, dollar sign, and go get a Theta channel set up so you guys can start earning the T-fuels. You dig? I I, I could I would not argue against that strategy. <laughs> okay, V-Chain. Um, it's nine cents. I heard more whispers. I hear more whispers um, that we may not be far away from a Coinbase listing. Your thoughts on V-Chain? You know, it's a project. It, it, it's going to be – we're going to talk about V-Chain when we go through my portfolio – I liked it. I liked it a lot when it was um, relatively hard to get and extremely cheap because I thought, again, it had a large adjustable market. I think it's a time will tell thing. You know what I mean? It, it, it's everything except Bitcoin is a time will tell thing in my view. Bitcoin's the only thing that's established itself as a, as a viable commercial industrial grade product for the world and every segment of the world. Everything I was already told. <laughs> you know what I mean? But everything else is is a large degree speculation. And and that's okay because that is where you make the largest gains. Right? Yeah, I'm actually looking at uh scaling back my V chain. So I'm gonna give it a few more weeks. And if this Coinbase stuff, if if it's more than rumors, I'm gonna hold off for the Coinbase listing. 
And if it's not, and it's just rumors, that might be the reason why the token is where it is. That little, uh, you know, couple weeks ago there, you know, VeChain, 2, Mainnet, all that, that was a whole nothing burger. <clears throat> so I think most of the price, the reason it got up to about 10 cents was because of that. I don't see real partnerships. I don't see real use, utility, and adoption. I just see a big, vibrant community. And while that's good, it's not enough. So we'll see. Uh, Cosmos, cool. Um, they released some new stuff. They got some new partners, blah, blah, blah. Still, no one's really building anything super dramatic. So we'll see. Um, again, protocol layer, and you want the picks and shovels plays. Um, Chili's. This is a cool token I like because it's uh, for soccer fans. You can essentially – it's a fan token for uh, soccer and football, which is great. I like that. Um, where will it go? I don't know. It's got, a, it's got a decent market cap. The thing is I don't know how to price these community tokens. So I would have never thought it would have gotten this high, but then again, it could triple. There, there's really no way – a lot of these things, it's just impossible to price. Do you have I any don't thoughts? Know if that's about? necessarily true. And, and I'll tell you, if I had to put a structure to, let's talk about chilies or anything like it, anything that takes and commoditizes a fandom, right? So like rally token. Okay. So it doesn't matter what the name of the token is. If it commoditizes a fan base, you look at the adjustable market of the fan base and you start trickling down the economics of it. How much do fans spend on tickets? How much do they spend on merch? How much do they spend in concessions? You know, all these type of analytics are, are relatively easily available. Those are, to me, the adjustable markets of these coins because the owners of the teams that decide to sign in or stay away from these quote unquote projects like Chili's um, can monetize all kinds of things, right? Earn X amount of Chili's coins and you get a free hot dog at the next Dodgers game, right? Earn enough Chili's coins by uh, buying tickets, um, buying special satellite events, uh, whatever, buying enough merchandise and you'll get a suite at the next home opener or, you know, whatever. There's a lot of ways to do it, and I think there's a that that's a huge market that will be exploited because what it's going to do is it could eventually crush your ticket masters and all those intermediaries that stand between the team's actual net revenue and the expenditures of the fandoms that are supporting that particular team. And Bill asks, um, Chili's say they are minting NFTs. Does that affect the value of the token? Bill <clears> – <throat> Everybody's minting NFTs. Every pretty soon right. be, there'll be NFTs on on uh, Bitcoin because that's the cool thing right now. So I don't think that in and of itself, uh, I don't think it really adds any value. I think that's just a feature that everybody's doing, and it's kind of a it's a cool thing to say right now. It's what you say. Oh, I, I do NFTs. Everybody does NFTs. You, you're not you're not doing NFTs. So yeah, no, I don't think it affects the value. Um, okay, Voitech, question. What do you look at on a token to determine if it's going to be a turn and burn or a long-term investment? How much time do you give a project before you reevaluate it as stagnate? Well, that's a question that could take several eons to answer. But, Jerry, I'll let you get to take a stab at it. How about we defer that? Uh, um, let's answer that when we get into my portfolio because yeah. that question I had to ask myself. Let's see. Okay. Uh, and then Pablo asks, and I don't know the answer. Any, any NFL NFTs for fans? Uh, Gronkowski did a sale of some of his stuff and he raised a few million bucks. Good for him. Um, which was really MLB, right? Major League Baseball, Fernando Tatis, one yep. of the hottest, most popular new players in baseball has done it. So, yeah, I mean, individuals are coming out. As far as the NFL having uh, decided on a platform, I mean, my guess is they would probably do something very similar to what's going on with NBA Top Shots, and they may even be in discussions with Dapper Labs to do something like that. Exactly. Um, by the way, we were talking about we'll, – and we'll get down to flow here in a second, but uh, they just brought on Michael Jordan as an investor. So they raised $355 million, I think, 
Michael Jordan and some other people came on. But anyway, that's kind of interesting. So I'm guessing Dapper Lab is going to catch a bid uh, and also probably have a direct line to a lot of his uh, licensing type stuff. I'm guessing that's part of this. So we'll and see. His whole network of the superstars from his era mm -hmm. and these classic NFTs. Yeah, there's all sorts of cool things they could do. So my guess is probably don't want to be selling flow right now. Uh, okay, Mana, you got to burn it. If you want to build stuff, if you want to buy land in Decentraland, it's still pretty small market cap for what I believe is kind of a zero competition market. I mean, if it's, you know, I don't know any other worlds that have tokens that we talk about. This is the only one as far as I know. So I hold mana. I like it. I, depending on the success of this casino and some of the other things they're doing, I may even add. Any thoughts on mana, Jerry? You know, the, you're talking to a guy that 12 years, 15 years ago, spent a tremendous amount of time in a virtual world called Second Life. Mm. And I had a, I earned what they call lumens, which was their digital monetary unit of account in the game, DJing. And I did, I, did, I had a talk, I had a relationship talk show, I had all kinds of things that I did. Anyway, the digital, virtual digital worlds are not new, they're only growing. So it's a trend play. How many people are going to get out of their 3D world and get into a virtual 3D world, right? A lot. Look at it's it's a it's a millennial trend and a Gen Y trend and a Gen Z trend. Kids, younger people are more comfortable in a virtual world than any other demographic before them. So these, it's a trend play. Why today. wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, interesting question. Emmanuel asks, what are the risks in crypto lending? Well, that the lender, the borrower, just doesn't pay the loan back. They get blown up. They throw it into something to grab some more yield. So they basically rehypothecate what they borrowed. And just like in other markets like repo, um, when the rent is due, there's nothing left. So you can lose, you know, all of it. Now, normally what happens in these lending facilities like Gate and these other platforms, they only lend a portion uh, based on people's net account value, and then they lock out part of the account to hold funds and whatever. But the risks are you can lose all your stuff. So the risk, 100%. <laughs> That's the risk. Uh, can I make a Jerry Hall NFT? Well, of course. I mean, I can't say yes. Jerry would have to give you permission. I'll go on record to say yes, but I would like 0.5% of net proceeds in perpetuity. <laughs> 0.5%. 0.5% of all net proceeds in perpetuity. So 50 basis points? In Yes, in perpetuity. I'm not greedy. Okay. Brandon, Brandon, I want I want 1,000 basis points since Jerry <laughs> only wants 50. <laughs> on Jerry's NFT. I'm the agent. <laughs> I'm the agent on this. I want 10%. I want 1,000 basis points. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, seems like okay. Let's keep going. Uh, engine, engine, and graph token. Funny enough, they both, in my opinion, they sit in between layer one and layer two. They're beneath the DApps, but they're on top of protocols. Um, for, they do different things, right? This is a picks and shovels play as far as um, selling uh, on online assets, in-game assets, uh, a gaming token, a rewards token, da da da, which is cool, and I think it's got a lot farther to run. Graph token is more of a picks and shovels play for uh, developers and software engineers. Um, so uh, whether they want to sell or essentially rent out their kind of indexing servers they've created to other platforms, or they just don't want to have to build these things themselves. Um, so my thoughts are graph token has a big future, especially as Coinbase goes out and starts talking about their direct listing. It is Coinbase Venture Project. It is live on Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, blah, 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 and other other assets to follow. So any thoughts on Engine and Graph, Jerry? You know, <clears throat> no. I trust you. All right, cool. Uh, IOST, 
it's still we're kind of frenemies. It's China. It's a Ethereum hack job. Lots of partnerships. Uh, but yeah, we can tell by the market cap doesn't cl- doesn't seem clear that there's a lot of use, utility, or adoption. Um, so it's this. It's kind of a a mobilized community and and not much more. So we'll see. Uh, TBK I like a lot. I actually added TBK this morning a little bit. Uh, they are like Dapper Labs, but with licensing agreements. Dapper Labs, as far as we know, they haven't quite nailed all the licensing yet. TBK, they have. So, but they're down eight percent today, so it is what it is. Um, we'll see. Uh, any thoughts on Dapper or TBK? No. Nope. Cool. Uh, one inch. It's the only uh, DeFi-ish kind of exchange platform that I'm willing to invest in. Tiny market cap. I think this is this is due for a big, big Uniswap type move. I just don't know when. It would be one of these things where there's nothing, there's nothing, and then one day it's twelve bucks, and then one day it's eighteen bucks, and one day it's forty six bucks. I just don't know when or how we get there. But the staking is really good, and I'm willing to hang on and wait. Uh, any thoughts on one inch, Sherry? I do, and it's the same thought that I would have on Uniswap or Sushi Swap or any of those, and that is this: they're the only playground in town. What happens, right, when the new playground opens up next door, and the new playground has a cheaper admission price and much faster, better rides? How many people continue to go to the old amusement park when the brand new, fancy, shiny amusement park is opened up next door that's cheaper? Yeah. In other words, in other words, I do not think for one second that Uniswap one inch as they as they exist today will be the viable platforms for these things in the future. Because their models are all messed up, but they get so yeah. much attention because they're the only ones in town yeah they kind of are the only play let's talk about uh fet uh fetch.ai uh it's the ai play if you're going to talk about that you talk about agi along with it i think people aren't really paying attention to the ai space i am i actually bought more this morning um if it's anything under a dollar i'm adding dollar cost averaging i'm buying i actually i'm doing this one every four days so every four days poof 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 uh the staking is pretty nice and if you stake through uh fetch.ai you get uh metal x tokens this is something that people aren't really talking about so metal x mtlx if you really want to go down the rabbit hole it's m-e-t-t-a-l-e-x that's the company i'm just gonna say do do a little research and see if it interests you because it does interest me but anyway you can go to staking.fetchai, sorry, staking.fetch.ai, and you can stake directly. But again, just like Audius, come with your uh, MetaMask wallet full of Ethereum to light on fire because that's what you're going to do. But the staking is good. It's 10%. It's perpetual. You're getting, you're getting it in real time. Now, you have to then take – you have to claim it. And restake it. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting until that makes sense. So I'm I'm going to try to wait until I get a big giant stash of fetch, uh, of fet to stake. Any thoughts? Every on- time you stake it, it's a huge gas fee. It's a huge gas fee. Yep. So that's that's frustrating. Uh, there's some stuff coming about both fetch and metal X in about the next week, at least if we believe. The uh, their Telegram and their Discord and all that kind of stuff. We will see. I'm kind of excited to see where this goes, but um, I'm a long term. I'm I'm building in the AI space, so I'm building AGI. I'm building um, FET, and I do them alternating. So like today, I added um, FET. In two more days, I'll add AGI, and I just go back and forth until my cup runneth over. Okay, uh, StormX, it's at six bucks. Uh, some people are into this. Some people aren't. Notice all of these market caps. The only one that's wrong is near because they get this market cap wrong. It's actually $2 billion. But look at all these market caps. Flow, 1 inch. FET, Stormix, uh, 
Origin, which is doing great. Um, it's down a little bit, but it's still doing great. Audio, which audio is kicking butt. It's down a little bit, but it's still having a great month and uh, week, uh, week, month, year. AGI and Rally. All of these tokens under a billion market cap. Look at Rally. Holy crap. <laughs> They're having the fake ICO on CoinList starting – is that today or tomorrow? Might be tomorrow. What day is today? We still have another day in March, right? Yeah. So starting tomorrow at four – I think it's about four Pacific time, they'll start their, I, their ICO. Is it a real ICO? Well, no, because the token's already available. You can buy it right now on Gate or KuCoin and front run the ICO that's going to be on Gate because there they have lockups. Uh, okay, so let me go back really quick. Stormix, do your own research. I'm kind of interested in it um, for a few reasons. I'm not going to get into it. That's probably a greater discussion we'll have. Origin, launch online stores, very cheap, very effectively. Um I think it's going to have a really good future, and it's super, super cheap. This sucker is probably good for another 10x in it. Uh, audio, great staking, um, very expensive to stake because you have to use Ethereum and blah, 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 but but hopefully you know they'll figure this out. Um, but until then, the staking is like 35%, so it's really good. Uh, Nick, so with audio, does it present the same problem or issue that you talked about with one of the other tokens in that – so you stake it, right? Let's say I stake 584 of them. Right. And that 584 is generating X. Right. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up. I have to claim those tokens and then no. stake them in audio or audio no. is like- No, the cool thing uh, about audio, audio restakes in real time. Without extra Ethereum fees. Yes. Very important distinction for those of us that are penny pinchers. Thank you. Yes, I also am a penny pincher. I pinch all the pennies. Okay, uh, so cool, <coughs> AGI, uh, Singularity Net, Ben Gortzel coming over to um, Cardano. That'll be interesting. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of hubbub about that. This probably get, goes past a dollar when that occurs, my guess. Uh, let's see. Where did you? Where do you get the audio? You can get it at gate.io. There's a couple of places. You can swap into it. Binance, the big Binance. Binance if you can do Binance, but yeah. Um, so yes, that's where you would go. Uh, okay, and then near uh, obviously Nier's having a pretty good little move today. It's up thirteen. It's up thirteen on the day, on the week, eighty three percent on the year. Uh, sorry, on the on the month. Uh, the year we don't have a number yet because it's still pretty new. Near is not. Uh, it is a Coinbase venture. It's uh, and Andreessen Horowitz. It's everything Ethereum wants to do. With Ethereum 2.0, but probably will never do, is already been done. It's already working. You can go right now, this second. There it is. Now, why it's been kept under wraps by Coinbase, my guess is they work. I would imagine they'll make it part of their big go to market strategy, their publicity thing for uh, when they uh, announce their direct listing kind of publicly and go out. And that's in the next couple of weeks. So my guess is this thing starts to catch a bid. And anybody that looks at Coinbase and Coinbase Ventures is going to start looking through there. What else is a Coinbase Venture? Rally. <clears throat> what else is Rally? Rally is interesting to me because it's a place where influencers can spin up their own tokens and create their own networks. So they can create a little tokenized economy. My guess is this thing is going to rip. And so I am – Again, dollar cost averaging, not all not all in at once, but I am dollar cost averaging into a position because I think this easily catches a billion market. I mean, I think it's would will be very simple for them to get a billion market cap. And they're at 63 million, which is dust. So this probably goes uh, in the next few days, this probably catches a triple. Well, we know it'll catch a triple because of how many tokens CoinList is selling. Anyway, we'll see what that does to the price just because the, it's, it's not a direct corollary that the coin list fake ICO would jack the price up. But if you have a lot of people that buy in and they're locked up, that certainly takes a lot of the supply out of the market. That tends to have an upward bias. Okay, any thoughts on any of this stuff, Jerry, and then we'll move on. 
you covered it eloquently. We nailed it. We totally nailed it. Okay, we're gonna switch gears here, and let me go. Let me see if we have a cool, a cool little break here. We're gonna go into opinions, man, and the opinions are gonna be opinions on rebalancing Jerry's portfolio. We're gonna start off with where he started, and then we're gonna go to where we are now and what we might do. It's just our opinion, man. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. All right, we're back. We're going to start with Jerry's block folio. Jerry, what yes. are we looking at? Okay, that is a screenshot I took on November 20th of 2020. Okay. And why it was important is because when I came to the crypto space in February of 2018, over the course of two years, I put $78,000 of my U.S. money into the crypto market. I did not hit break even on that until November 20th of 2020, some Ooh. five short months ago. As you can see, that's the entire portfolio, XRP, Cardano, VET, XLM, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And <clears throat> after, you know, a lot of time in this space and trying to understand markets, it became very clear to me that XRP's path to any real valuation, real substantial valuation, was going to be a lot longer than the time horizon that I wanted to give it for the amount of money that I had invested in it. We all know what happened in December. Uh, from this snapshot, XRP drove up to about 60 cents in late December. And on that very cold night, December 23rd, 2020, Brad Garlinghouse put out a tweet saying, tomorrow the SEC is filing a lawsuit against us. It was at that time that I sold a hundred and twenty one thousand xrp and what that did it went at, at, at a roughly 50 cent valuation is it gave me it gave me some working capital to use and i deployed a strategy that i had wanted to do earlier but didn't have the funds to do and that was to take a larger position in bitcoin and disperse myself into other layer one solutions you know, because we don't know what platform the next Facebook or the next Amazon or the next whatever will be built on. We're not I'm not really sure of that. So I employed your strategy. Basically, you could say what I did is I abandoned my strategy and stole everything that you've ever done that's good and utilized it. In a nutshell. But what I did is I just went, okay, listen, I have to be realistic. The hope and the dream that I had for XRP, the market is telling me over two and a half years, Jerry, we don't agree with you. And I had to put my hopes and dreams and my biases to the side and go, okay, nobody's going to be more responsible for my outcomes than me. Maybe I need to adjust my thinking. And so what I did is I just went, okay, well, what do we, what are the things that we do know? Well, we do know that the addressable store of value marketplace is hundreds of trillions of dollars. And most of it is with very conservative baby boomers. And they are not going to play venture capitalist in the crypto world, right? They're not going to come in and take a 5% position in Cardano and a 5% position in audio and a 5%, you know, they, they don't do that. They want assurances. They, you know, da, 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 da. So what, what do I do? Well, the only asset on the board that has that addressable market is Bitcoin. So I loaded up on Bitcoin. Seems like that was a good play. It was a good play. You know, let's you, can we go through, want to go through the current portfolio today? Yeah, so let's do this. Let me pop this right. off. So the one that you just saw, the one that you just saw was 73 grand of my money. And since then, what I've done is a combination of added, here are the stats. I've added $7,000 of real money 
into the portfolio and seventy thousand dollars of collateralized loans okay to create the valuation that you see right there and if you scroll down we can get into the assets Ooh, uh you have to scroll down oh, i have to scroll down <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie, that would be this one. Okay. So let's go here so we can make it a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah. So I increased my, my Bitcoin position to just about four Bitcoin, right? Okay. My Cardano position, interesting so enough, I have 100. Real quick, Jerry, when we're oh. going through these, we have the Clubhouse audience too, and they're just listening. So since they're only listening, uh, when we go through these tokens, let's oh, give Oh, I the, see what you're saying. Okay, let's okay, give okay. A, let's give a price so we have the total right. kind of total idea of what's going on. All right, November 20th, 2020 portfolio value 73 plus thousand dollars. Today, portfolio value $560,000. All I did was sold one chunk of XRP and took some collateralized loans. And with that, I built where, a- real quick, where, uh, I'm, I know where you collateralized, Jerry, but can you tell people where and why? Okay, I use one platform out of the three platforms I use. I collateralized assets on Nexo and took a 20% debt to equity ratio um, mandate. That's my personal guideline. So I will borrow up to 20% of my portfolio value on Nexo. To why, borrow. Why did, you, why did you choose Nexo? Well, because it was the easiest for me and I had the best rates as you'll see here in a second as we go down. I used Nexo because I was able to buy a bunch of Nexo coins really cheap. I mean, like really cheap. And that gave me five and a half, five point nine percent 5.9% is how much I pay to borrow money. And they pay me 6% on the assets that I'm earning interest on. Ooh, can I ask you a Nexo interest question? When, yes. they, when you own the Nexo <clears throat> token, you get dividends, yes? Once a year. See, I heard it was once a month. It's once a year, huh? It's once a year, and it's based on 30% of the profit of Nexo distributed amongst all the token holders. Mm. When is that distribution? August. Oh, well, that's cool. So we'll get it. So if you had a portfolio there now, you would get something in August. Correct. That's cool. If you owned, if you held Nexo tokens. Yes. Okay. Carry on. So we're at Bitcoin. So, uh, yeah, 20 so for deck Bitcoin, deck. Okay. I was able to get up to four Bitcoin with use, utilizing two strategies. One, some dollar cost averaging of U.S. dollars that was coming in, which was minimal. Some lending where I would collateralize against my portfolio, buy the Bitcoin, put the Bitcoin in that portfolio, increasing the valuation of the portfolio and decreasing my debt to equity ratio. If okay, so, borrow, so what you borrowed, you held in the Nexo account, and therefore you were getting a return on that Bitcoin by having correct. it held there in the Nexo account. Correct. And in essence, borrowing at 5.9% and earning at 6% is a net positive math equation. Pew, pew. Right? As a, so it's kind of like, like being the U.S. government and issuing a bond. A negative interest rate bond. It's a negative interest rate bond. Exactly. You're exactly. getting you're getting 10 basis points to own Bitcoin. They're paying you to own Bitcoin. They're paying me to own Bitcoin. And I learned, yes, it's a strategy I learned on crypto and coffee. And I will tell you what, I like to be paid to own Bitcoin. I'm a big fan of being paid to own Bitcoin. Right. So it leaves you now. Uh, you have 39, uh, 3.99. We'll call it four Bitcoin. Mm hmm. Uh, trading about uh, 58 and change. Well, actually, probably a little more than that, depending on where you look. But let's just call it 58, 58 mm -hmm. and a half. Yep. Now we have Cardano at a buck 22. You have 100, looks like 130,000. I do. And it was 190,000 at one time. Okay. Now, when Cardano, see, when I was buying Cardano between two cents and eight cents, Another thing I stole from crypto and coffee was what I was actually doing with each purchase was for eight cents, I was buying a dollar. That's a 92% return on my money. Hmm. That was my context in my brain, right? 
Every eight cents I invest today will give me a dollar later. That was my mindset. And so, so you I had a you had a big fat you had a a, a more. You had a at the minimum a 10x, but somewhere between a 10 and a 14x. Yes, sir. I did. And then when you when you scraped, what percentage did you took? So if you had 150, you took 20k off the table. Is that what it was? No, I took uh, I sold 50,000. I took 50k off the table. Okay, 50,000 in of Cardano. It's I took out 50,000 Cardano at a dollar 10. Okay, that's good. So 55k. And what I was able to do with that, see what you got to remember, I'm always basing everything on my cost basis, right? So for instance, if I had a total of $16,000 invested in Cardano, then if I scrape something off the top, it's got to be at least 16,000. I want to get my original investment back plus some profit and allow the rest of it to ride. It's in poker, we call it a free roll. It's the house money. It's not my money. It's the house money. Right. So, uh, okay. So that gives us Cardano. So that puts us, so there's 230 ish K in Bitcoin. We have, which you're getting paid, um, even based on borrowing, you're still getting paid 10 basis points on that. Plus you're borrow, you're getting paid to leverage really is what it is. We're being exactly. honest, exactly. um, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay. Cardano, you're getting staking rewards. So that number is actually going up each week anyway. It is, it is. And we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Uh, Nexo token. So you had to lay into some Nexo. You bought 24,000 and change. I'm guessing you bought them on the cheap. I did. I've got a roughly $8,000 principal investment in Nexo. Wow. So you did 300% on that bad boy. Yeah, the thing about the Nexo token and, and why it, it it had a lot of value to me is if I'm going to utilize the if I'm going to utilize the platform and take advantage of the arbitrage to borrow money at under the cost of capital, right? Under the cost of capital is what I'm able to borrow this money at. My thinking was if I ever get in trouble, the Nexo token could easily be liquidated. And if I keep my loan value relative to the value of the Nexo token I have, I then don't have to any other asset to pay off my loan. Right. You could just nuke your you could just nuke the Nexo and you're right back to, to even. Correct. Yep. That's cool. Correct. And you and you would get that 30%. Well, you would get some percentage dividend in August. Correct. And, and the beautiful thing about the price appreciation of the Nexo token itself is to get maximum benefit on interest earned and the lowest interest owed on loans, all you need to maintain is 10% of the portfolio value in the value of Nexo. Right. Sounds so, great until your portfolio goes to 2 million bucks. Right. However, my portfolio value on Nexo is only a little over $300,000. And if you see the current value of Nexo token, my, that portfolio can grow to $670,000 and I still am in what they call their premium loyalty section. I get the best rates on loans and the highest rate of return on my assets right. that I lend. I get it. So up to six, because you have 67,200, so up to 672,000, you would still be at 10% in the platinum category. Correct. So in other words, what Assets I have on Nexo would have to more than double without the Nexo token appreciating at all for me to even get close to getting kicked out of that that ideal spot. And you would assume that other people that are you that are leveraging Nexo would then have to go tap the market and grab more Lex, uh, Nexo to maintain that balance in their portfolio. So it's almost like at a certain point it should track the greater market. You would think so. And now here's the thing that. You were talking about, well, why did I use Nexo over, let's say, BlockFi or Celsius? Well, Nexo has a million customer base. The next closest competitor is 500,000 with Celsius. That's and those, more are, than, all, that's and those are all degen those are all degenerate half tards anyway. So I don't. Well, I count, the point I is, the half, point is yeah. with a million customer base, the amount of those customers that are going to utilize the collateralized lending or I'm sorry, collateralized borrowing element to me spoke to a marketplace 
for the Nexo token to be a real utility token that people would want to have. Right. If they're going to be on that platform. You're, you're extremely incentivized to keep hold and essentially stake Nexo tokens. And the Correct. benefit is you get these great lending rates, these great collateral rates. And once a year, as we assume in August, you get a big fat dump of extra Nexo that makes life easier. Correct, Amundo. That's cool. It also incentivizes people to hang on longer because that dump only happens once a year. Right. Okay. Now, Dot, when we come down to Dot, Dot, again, stolen from crypto and coffee at $8. We're talking about Dot at $8. We're talking about Dot having a yield element to it through the Kraken at 12%. I can stake my dot with Kraken and earn 12%. Well, if it never got beyond $9, that's better than I can get anywhere in the legacy markets. There's nothing that pays right. you 12%. Not only that, 12 and it's every three days. It's every three days. So I made it, I took, you know, again, when, when you sell some XRP, you take some positions. When you sell 50,000 Cardano, you take some positions. Dot came from the Cardano. Mm, when I sold the $50,000 Cardano, I bought the $12,000 worth of Dot. No, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry. $6,000 worth of Dot. Right. Which has now become 22. So you did another almost 300% there. Correcto. Correcto mundo. Right. Meaning right. that, that your Cardano would be, if you valued that back to Cardano, you'd be at like a $3.60 Cardano to equal what you've done in DOT. Yes. But again, it was also back to that premise of if my only layer one plays were Cardano and Ethereum and the next Amazon gets built on DOT or NEAR or, or VET or any of them, I'm out. I'm, I'm not in the game. Right. So I took the mentality of, okay, I am going to utilize and leverage my portfolio in every way I can to gain exposure to the layer one solutions that I think have the next shot and actually having something useful built on top of them. Okay. So that gets us to dot. So you made a good trade there, obviously, because we're at 34 bucks. You're, you're over a 400% move, really. Right. So that's pretty fat. Plus, you're getting 12%. Plus, it's every three days. So it's compounded bi weekly. Correct. No, no. Yeah, bi weekly. Right? Is that how no, you say bi weekly it? is every two weeks. Every this two weeks. How do you say twice a week? <laughs> Try daily. You know, T R I daily. Try daily. Yeah. What a weird way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try daily. Okay. Uh, so then we have um, the beauty that is um, Ethereum. You have. Eight Ethereum, anything magical there? No, it was just, it was straight. It was a, you know, there's too many people doing too many things on it. Don't give up on it yet. You only, your, your cost basis was $350 per Ethereum. It would be silly to give away, to give that away. I don't have a large enough stake in it that it's time to take profit and I have a cost basis of 350 per coin. Why would you why would you shit can it when there's too many uncertainties? Fair play. And I'm running interest on it. Let's talk about okay, so let's keep going down the list. Okay. Quant XDC, these two tokens were a direct result of the vet play. Mm. So that when I bought a year ago, I was able to get vet at zero zero. Zero seven or something like some some crazy low number, and I bought three hundred thousand of them. When it started catching a bid and got to one cent and two cent and three cent, four cent and five cent, I thought to myself, "I'm sitting on thirty thousand dollars of this vet." I took two hundred thousand vet and I sold them, keeping one hundred thousand. Okay. Again, got all my initial investment out plus profit and i took bought a little bitcoin every time i do this i buy a little bitcoin yep i'll buy i'll take a new position so i took a new position in quant and a new position in xdc 
for a grand total of $8,000. I put $4,000 in each token. Okay. That's turned out well. I bought near protocol at $2 as a direct result of my watching crypto and coffee and stealing everything that isn't nailed down. I took a position in near, I took a position in XDC and I took a position in quant all from a profit play from VET. That's good. So those are all free positions. Those are all free positions with still having a hundred thousand vet. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, we can scramble down here to the lower stuff that I got. So the XRP, uh, I sold it all at 50 and I rebought back in at 22 cents. I bought 9,000 of them. Okay. So you're back in the game. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, regardless of the viability of the token and will it ever be a $10 token, I don't know any of that stuff, but I do like its speed. Yeah. Settlement. There are things I like about the XRP token. I really like them. So, and I love the XRP community. So I am an XRP holder and that's important. Let me ask you this. Are you, have you already kind of pre-spent your flare tokens that you're going to get? No, no, I'm actually going to try to utilize the yield element of the um, delegation for the Oracle and the governance areas of that platform. Cause again, back to, Nick, I don't know what I don't know what platform will spring the killer app that a billion or two people, two billion people use. I do not have a crystal ball. So why not have his exposure to as many of those as possible? Because you do have a hundred and twenty ish thousand flare tokens. Thirty. And that's a hundred and thirty at the current price of about a buck and a quarter, which now we all know that price is going to get decimated when they do their first drop because a lot of people are going to take profit. But even if it only holds 50 cents, you essentially got your whole XRP supply back if you wanted. You could go all the way – and I'm not telling anyone to do this. I think this would be asinine. But you could buy back your XRP stash with Flare if you're quick about it. I don't know if I'd want to. Again, back to anytime I make an investment – Again, I stole this from crypto and coffee. I look at the total supply. I look at the circulating supply. And then I look at the metrics and analytics that tell me how much of that circulating supply is actually float versus how much is, uh, can be attributed to uh, lost, lost you know, hard drives and forgotten passwords and things of that nature that, that you can you know, analytically take out of the circulating supply. So if I understand the tokenomics of a, of, a, of a token, then I can kind of estimate, well, it will need this much impact in the market to do this. Well, with XRP, there's so much of it controlled by Ripple that to truly understand how it's going to appreciate in value when there is nothing, if, you know, it's a lot of hat, no, no cattle kind of thing right now. In, until until the IMF or Bank of International Settlements or somebody starts putting or FX flows show us that the demand is there and it starts driving the price up, I don't see how it can do it. So I'm gonna I'm a, you know I would yeah. not buy my XRP back. I won't. I'm not saying people shouldn't. If you love XRP, buy as much of it as you want. But I want to get a return on my investment that I understand. Not, you don't you don't want to miss another year. You don't want to miss, you another, want to miss year. another year or two years or three years. You know what I mean? Of watching every other coin go up by 800 percent Yeah, opportunity cost has a value. You know what I mean? And if I can buy something for eight cents today that I can realistically map its progress to a dollar. Well, right on. And if I could do that with XRP, I'm sure I would be much heavier positioned in it, but I can't. Okay, so then let's go down uh, hot. I noticed hot token. It's been doing quite well lately. It's actually it up. Yeah, it's, it's been crushing it. I think it's up, uh, well, yeah, over 100% just on the week. Um, I think it's a pretty weak project, but it's got a vibrant community and good on them. Uh, I'm so not a hot. Hot is important to understand. 
Another thing, I what did I learn from crypto and coffee? I learned that it, there's nothing wrong if you take eight thousand dollars of capital and put two hundred dollars of it to a what we would call a lottery ticket, a moonshot. So there are tokens that you will see in this that are lottery tickets. Hot BTR and Casino Coin do not have more than one hundred and eighty dollars of my money invested in them. Still pretty good. You made a nice little, nice little bucket off that. So hot. I bought it on the cheap. I have one hundred and fifty dollars into hot. It's worth four grand. You're killing it. Now here's the thinking: when hot equals eight thousand dollars, I will sell a hundred thousand dollars of them. Yeah. And I guess what I'll do with that hundred with that money? Redeploy it. I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> BTR, guess what? BTR adds utility to some of my things that I utilize on BitTrue. I got BTR coin at 0 0.009. Yeah, it, it it actually jumped up. Remember last month it touched, it, it was actually moving pretty fast. It moved up really quick. XLM, again, I, you saw, I bought it at nine cents. And I've sold some of it. You remember the play. I called you. I said, Nick, this is a token that the rails of USDC could possibly be running on in the future. They announced their partnership. And we saw it go from $0.09 cents to $0.75. Cents. Well, I sold a bunch of it, obviously, as evidenced by how much I have left. And guess what that money did? It bought some Bitcoin. It took a position in, in audio. It took, you know what I mean? That, you know, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just utilizing stuff. Adam, same thing. Adam is a thing that I took profits and redeployed into an opening position. Adam is an opening position. Audio is an opening position. AGI is an opening position. Algo is an opening position. So these things are relatively new in my portfolio. Casino coin. $75 bought me a million tokens. It's 10 x I had $225. I bought 3 million tokens. I've sold 2 million of them when um, it was about 30% higher than it is right now. And that money went to help buy more bit, a little bit, just a scooch more Bitcoin. And I think I took my position in Atom with the casino coin profits. Okay. And the rest of these are just nothing burgers. These are tiny little things that are sitting like right. Cell, Bat, and Link are all sitting on a Celsius platform just just because I wanted to see, I wanted to take, you know, I wanted just, to have a Just vibrating. But at least with FLR, the cool thing is over the next two years, the way they describe it, you're going to be given, at least at current market value, about $140,000 worth of FLR. That's... That's the story. I think what one thing I want to leave before I come back to your screen, every single token on this list, with the exception of Casino Coin, is earning interest somewhere, somehow, whether mm. staking uh, directly through that platform wallet or through a program like Nexo Celsius or BlockFi. Yes, and Biotech Breakout, we're not going to go into the tax thing because that's that's a dead fish. Um, get an accountant. Anybody that's got uh, tax questions, get an accountant. So you have someone on the record and have them do it. Getting into the tax discussion is. Um, well, I'll just, I'll tell biotech. Yeah. I, I know exactly where I sit and I sit in a position where I have no income biotech. So it's not like I, you know what I mean? I don't have an income. So I know I can stay with below what we call $38,200 per year for interest, income, dividend, liabilities before I need to concern myself with anything. And I'm nowhere near that. Bam. So Jerry's answer is none yet. <laughs> none yet. None yet. But none yet. I think what's important, and I wanted to talk to Nick about, and I'm happy to share on the show, there's no one strategy that made the produce these results. It's a combination of, of one starting with myself, right? That whole XRP locked in thing 
I had to move myself out of that bias and go, what's the most important thing, right? Go back to first principles. What's the problem? I'm not keeping track with the market. That was the problem. What's the solution? Go back to first principles. Jerry, you're the problem. Your biases. So once I got my mind right, then I was able to go, okay, well, what's a good strategy? Own shit that pays you to own it while the market does whatever it's going to do. Leverage quality, pristine assets at a positive rate, not a negative rate, but a positive rate. And between those simple little strategies in five months to go from 73 grand to 556 grand, I don't think anybody would argue with those results. I think that's pretty good. I think that's okay. 800% baby. For the crypto market, it's not bad. So, you know, what I think I would leave with, oh, by the way, L2 Tech's up, what's going on? VTTV, what's up? Crypto Gamer 420, Gastonic. And uh, now that I know that that's Anthony, and uh, Bitflippa, what's going on? Say hello to everyone over there. Um, so I guess I would say, what are, what's the one lesson that you would take with you, kind of our final thoughts, the lesson that you took with you over the last year compared to the first three years of, of being in the crypto space? The last year, yes, the markets were going up. Everything's kind of appreciating, but you've gotten more than just the Bitcoin appreciation, and that's the line in the sand. Everybody that wants to measure your success, if you went up with the rate of increase of Bitcoin, good on you, but that's the minimum success you should have. Everyone should at least be up, well, eight to what? 7x? Minimum. Minimum 7x. So if you're not up 700%, and it's like, wow, that's a lot. No. Because you could just have been sitting in Bitcoin and done that. So if you're not up 700, Jerry's up an extra 100%, a little bit more. So by reaching out to some of these higher velocity assets, he increased his Bitcoin holdings. He could go all to Bitcoin right now more than if he had just held Bitcoin. That's the line in the sand, people. That's my final thought is that's the line in the sand. What would you say, Jerry, as far as kind of coaching people – you know, you went through the down times, the depressing times, the reevaluate times. What would you say or some kind of the lesson you took from that? Number one, I think it was good, right? It helps spur some humility. This isn't easy. It's not insurmountable. It's not impossible, but it isn't easy. And the next thing is to just, you know, be open to being wrong. Right. You don't need to pivot 180 and convert everything into every, you know what I mean? You can take calculated, measured approaches to adjusting your path. I think of it like the airplane that leaves LAX headed to New York. You would think this the most efficient route would be to fly in a straight line, right? Fly up, straight line to New York, drop down. There's no obstructions. Well, no plane ever does that. It always is being taken with wind currents and this and that and elevations. And it's a matter of always correcting back and forth. And it eventually it gets to where it's got to go. I had to learn that to be flexible enough to get pushed off to the side a little bit and then come back here and then go down that road a little bit and come back here. I'd like you use the metric of if I'm keeping pace with Bitcoin's appreciation, I'm on par. And if I want to exceed that, then I have to go further up the risk curve. In, in, you know, invest in some higher riskier assets. But so far, everything's been great. The portfolio is compounding a, a yield rate of about $1,500 per month. Nice. That's not bad. You know what I mean? Listen, if you can add currency units, especially through staking, through various degrees of, of safe lending, um, I mean, this is the time to do it. The lessons that you learn right now this second are going to help you when it's not going to be easy to make money. And I believe the easy money is going to be coming for the next few years. If you're willing to roll up your sleeves, you'll always find somewhere where the money's coming in. I think you'll be able to be beat Bitcoin if you're willing to do research year after year. But at a certain point, 
two years, three years in, this market will be more fully formed. It will be more saturated and, and we'll be looking at a market that's maybe, who knows, 20, 30, 50 trillion in, in crypto total you know, net value before you look at crypto equity and things like that. I'm just saying the, the market that we're looking at right now. And so then it gets difficult and it gets difficult for the people that have just been experiencing green and thinking that they're good. None of us are good if we don't do research, if we don't, if we don't, you have to have an edge, but you can get your edge by simply just doing research and having a good understanding of legacy um, economics. If you don't understand the leg legacy economic system, you're going to be lost. At some point, you're going to get clipped. You're not going to understand where it happened. You're not going to be able to explain why the markets are selling off and all that. When you can explain those things, you don't stress about them. When you see the funding rate on Bitcoin go go the wrong way and you see a bunch of people over their skis and then they get decimated and for the next four days, there's cascading liquidations. You don't panic because you know that these are just normal machinations of a market where speculators are going crazy. And that's okay. This is the market we're in. It's an extremely volatile market and it's going to get more volatile as Bitcoin becomes less liquid. And as these other assets become less liquid, more staking, less liquidity. More Bitcoin going into hardware wallets and cold storage and air gap cold storage. Less liquidity, less liquidity, more volatility because fewer transactions and fewer coins <coughs> move the price hard. So anyway, those things and more, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, Jerry, thank you for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me on the show. You know, it was like uh, when I reached out to you, it was like partly I do want to get some, what do you call it? validation for the process and but i also am in like have become humble enough to go are there any holes like nick you, and you haven't said anything yet i keep waiting for that maybe you're waiting we're gonna, to do, that off we're air. gonna do that we're gonna do that offline okay <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair Fair play. Play. my only ob observation you don't have any exposure to ai i have singularity and i have cardano yeah. Where's your FET? I don't have any FET, and I'll tell you, I'm, I don't. I don't know. Is it? Does anybody have enough Ethereum to get into these things? <laughs> you have enough, Jerry. I want to see some FET in that portfolio. We'll we'll talk more. Um, let's call it a day. Let's move the show over to uh, the clubhouse for everybody um, over on Theta, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, the WhoTube, Periscope. Uh, Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. Uh, markets are good, and that is great. Um, has there been anything super dramatic happen over the last few hours? Not really. Um, things are kind of doing what they're doing. They're melting up. The greater story right now, I think, is still Bitcoin. And my guess is we're about to see a pretty ridiculous move in Bitcoin. I'm going to guess that by the end of April, we touch 80,000. Why? Because about 17 other douchebags have been calling for 80,000. And at a certain point, people start to buy into the myth. And uh, and for no other reason than community forming, I think we see 80,000. Uh, I sold 80,000 calls, 80,000 strike for April 25th. Mm. When did you sell it? Where was Bitcoin when you sold it? Friday. Uh, what were we, 55? <sighs> I don't know. I, I'd buy hey, those guys. Hey, if I get called out, if they pay me, they pay me. I mean, they pay you know. you, that's right. If they pay you 25% for a few days, that's fine. Okay, um, let's call it a day. Thank you, everyone. Remember, don't do anything that either my or Jerry's poor insolvent grandmothers strung out on meth, smoking crack, smoking water, banging lewds, uppers <laughs> to take the top off, you know, but when you get too high, let's let's grab those downers. Let's, let's let's grab the blue pills. Let's bring it back down. Oh, I'm getting too low. It's time to jack it back up. Let's do some cheese balls, and we're out.